So let us look at some questions based on the range of a function. So the first question is f of x is equal to mod of x minus 3. You are asked to find the range of this function. So there are different ways in which you can find the range of a function. So you can directly find the range by analytical method. The range is nothing but the values of f of x. For different values of x, the values of mod x minus 3 constitute the range of the function. So you can use the analytical method or sometimes you can also use the graphical method use graphical method or you can also use inverse method so depending on the question whatever is useful you can use the different methods so in analytical methods you look at the function and think of a process by which you can find the values of okay for example if you have mod x minus 3 so y is equal to mod of x minus 3 in this question. Now we know the domain of this function is all real numbers because mod is defined for all real numbers. So x can go anywhere in between minus infinity and plus infinity. So if x is in between minus infinity and plus infinity, x minus 3 obviously also goes from minus infinity to plus infinity. And now if you take the mod of these numbers, so if you take all numbers between minus infinity and plus infinity, the modulus of them obviously lies between 0 to infinity. So mod x minus 3 is nothing but y, so y is in between 0 to infinity, so the range is nothing but close at 0 to infinity, close 0 to infinity. Next, if you take the graphical method, so you draw the graph of mod x minus 3 and try to see for what values of y you get some values of x. If you take the graph of modulus of x minus 3, if this is 3, the graph of mod x minus 3 looks like this. Graph of modulus of x minus 3 looks like this. Now, what is the range of this function? The range is nothing but values of y for which you get some values of x. So if you go on drawing horizontal lines, so for this values of y, you're getting some values of x. Correspond to this y, you're getting some x. Correspond to this y, you're getting some x. Correspond to y is equal to 0, also you're getting some x. But if you go below, the x-axis correspond to these y's, you don't have any value of x. So correspond to these y's, you don't have a value of x. So these numbers don't come in the range of the function. So what is the range? Is the num is a set of values of y for which you have some values of x. So obviously from the graph, the range is closed 0 to infinity. Or you can think of the range as the shadow of the curve on y-axis. There is a cube. If you throw light from here, so what is the image of this graph on y-axis? So obviously, all the numbers on this graph, if you take the image on y-axis, the image lies only on the non-negative part of the y-axis. Hence, the range is close 0 to infinity. And you have also a method called inverse method. This will be useful if it is easy to find the inverse of the function. Now let us go to f of x is equal to x by 1 plus x square. Now here, by analytical method, it's difficult to find the range of x by 1 plus x square because there is a variation of x in the numerator as well as denominator. So as x changes, where does this value lie? That is a difficult question to answer. So you can have, you can solve this using graphical method or inverse method. 
So if you take the graphical method, so you can think of how the graph of this looks like. So as you can see, this is to draw the graph also there are different methods. If you take this x onto the denominator, so this is 1 by 1 plus x square by x, that is 1 by x plus 1 by x. So we know the graph of x plus 1 by x because x y is equal to x plus 1 by x is a standard function. The graph of y is equal to x plus 1 by x looks like this. Is that x is equal to 1, the value is 2, then x is equal to minus 1, the value is minus 2. And for all the positive values of x, the value of y is greater than 2. For all the negative values of x, the value of y is less than minus 2. Now, this is y is equal to x plus 1 by x. Now I want the graph of 1 by y. That is if you take the reciprocals of all these values, how does the graph look like? So infinity, so 1 by infinity becomes 0. That is when x is equal to 0, you get 0 as the answer. So between 0 and 1, the values of y are greater than 2. So 1 by y values will be less than 1 by 2. So if you take this as 1 by 2, the values will be less than 1 by 2. When x is equal to 2, when y is equal to 2, 1 by y reaches 1 by 2. And next again, the values of y are more than 2, hence the values of 1 by y will be less than 1 by 2. And as x goes to infinity, as y goes to infinity, 1 by y goes asymptotically to 0. And here, the same pattern repeats with respect to the negative side. This is minus 1 by 2. So once you have the graph, what are the values of y for which you have some values of x? So y belongs to minus half to plus half, right? So this will be the range of this function. Next, you can also follow another way to find the graph of this function. So next, if you think of it as a rational function, there is a standard process to find the graph of a rational function. So first this is x by 1 plus x square. What are the zeros of the numerator? When x is equal to 0, the numerator becomes 0. And what are the zeros of denominator? There are no zeros of denominator. This yes, the denominator will never be equal to 0. So if you draw the wavy curve for this, x equal to 0 is the critical point. On the right side it is positive, on the left side it is negative. This is the way we go. Next, let us see what happens to this curve at infinities. So as x tends to infinity, f of x, y tends to 0, right? Because infinity by infinity square. And as x tends to minus infinity also, y tends to 0. Because this is minus infinity by again infinity square. That means this graph goes to 0 as x tends to infinity and also x tends to minus infinity. So it has to go up and come down, go down and go up. That means this graph will have a maxima and a minimum. And maxima minima can be found out using differentiation. So if you do the differentiation, dy by dx is equal to 1 plus x square whole square. So 1 plus x square into differentiation of x is 1 minus x times differentiation of 1 plus x square is 2x is equal to 0. So 1 minus x square is equal to 0 implies x is equal to plus r minus 1. It means this function has maxima or minima at x is equal to plus r minus 1. And what are the values at x is equal to 1? f of 1 is 1 by 2. f of minus 1 is minus 1 by 2. So if you combine all this information, so how does the graph look like? At x is equal to 0, the value is 0. At x is equal to 1, the value is half, that's a maximum. As x tends to infinity, the graph goes back to 0. And at x is equal to minus 1, the value is minus half. 
as x tends to minus infinity again the graph goes to zero so again you got the same graph right so the range is from minus half to plus half this is the graphical way of finding the range so you can also use the inverse way of finding the range that is you find the inverse function find the domain of the inverse function to get the range of the original function so let us take y is equal to x by 1 plus x square if you do the cross multiplication y plus y x square is equal to x this implies x square y minus x plus y is equal to 0 this is a quadratic in x this implies x is equal to minus b plus minus root of b square minus 4ac by 2e 4ac by 2e so this is the inverse function and what is the domain of this inverse function what is the domain of this inverse function this inverse function will be defined as long as 1 minus 4y square is greater than or equal to 0. This implies 4y square is less than or equal to 0, sorry, less than or equal to 1. So y square less than or equal to 1 fourth. So y is in between minus 1 by 2 and plus 1 by 2. So please remember, this is a rational function. So y cannot be equal to 0 here, but this will not be omitted from the range of this function because when x is equal to 0, y is turning out to be 0. So whenever you do this inverse method, if you get specific problems at specific values of y, let's go and check with the original function. So y belongs to minus half to half is the range of the function. So by different methods, we get the same answer. 